If there's ever a time for a Labour leader to wear a T-shirt celebrating communism, this is not it. But there was Tasmania's new Labour leader, David O'Byrne, on the far left, with his politician sister wearing a shirt teaching us how to be a good communist, if such a thing exists, a good communist, with a fist, his shirt instructs. Now, I should ask that O'Byrne does have form. His chief of staff used to be a member of the Communist Party and praises communist writers. Now, we've all had our ideological excesses, you know. Gosh, I worked twice for the Labour Party when I was young. For communism? Advertising it now? But at least O'Byrne's shirt did admit that communism is created with a fist which happens to be the truth and the history of communism, created with fists, sticks, knives, guns, bombs, terror. And we're seeing that right now, which is why this is exactly the wrong time for Byrne to be indulging his inner totalitarian. Tomorrow, the communist dictatorship of China will celebrate the foundation of the party 100 years ago, with just 53 revolutionaries held a secret meeting in Shanghai. But look at China's bloated dictatorship today. Now, it is a threatening and aggressive superpower, threatening war, bullying Australia, crushing democracy in Hong Kong, arresting democracy activists there, and last week even raiding Hong Kong's biggest pro-democracy newspaper, arresting senior journalists and forcing the paper to shut. What a terrible, terrible day for freedom for any of us who lived in Hong Kong. And also now China jailing up to a hundred or a million Muslim Chinese, arresting two Australians simply for criticizing China. This is the worst time for a Labour leader to raise a fist in support of the communist ideology that inspired such evil and others like it. And, you know, there are young Chinese here in Australia who will be shocked by that sight. Until the virus pandemic, around 10% of our university students were actually from China. Extraordinary numbers. And among them were a few students whose business it was to keep the others in line, make sure they didn't drift too much to the West. And so Chinese students at Queensland University who were protesting for democracy, as they should, were attacked by ultra-nationalist Chinese students and pro-Hong Kong stands at Melbourne and Sydney universities, they were torn down. And Chinese students have now told a Human Rights Watch investigation here that this intimidation didn't stop there. If you protest against the Chinese Communist Party abroad, they will find people you love to make you pay. I received a message from a mainland classmate. He was like, I'm watching you. I support the Hong Kong police. Personally, I felt really scared. I went to see the uni psychologist because I was so stressed. Students were badmouthing me that I was not loyal to the country. I started a Twitter account because I was in Australia. I thought it was safe here. In March 2020, the local police contacted my parents and asked them to come to the police station. They issued an official warning. They said I must shut down my Twitter, stop spreading anti-government messages, and if I don't cooperate, they may charge me with a crime if I ever come back home. Now, some of those voices you heard were actually of actors to predict the identity of the students. Isn't that terrible that I've got to say that, to protect them and their families from reprisals from this communist regime ruling China today. That is the fist of communism. The David O'Byrne fist making supposedly good communism in this brutal way. O'Byrne should be ashamed of himself. Still, he might have other things now to be ashamed of. Just this afternoon, O'Byrne stood aside as leader while the Labour Party investigates allegations that he sexually harassed a junior union employee more than a decade ago. I suspect he won't be back after admitting he did exchange texts and a kiss with a 22-year-old employee at his union. I acknowledge that my behaviour did not meet the standards I would expect of myself. 
I also acknowledge I've let down my wife and family. At the time of the reported events, I genuinely believe the kiss and the text exchanges to be consensual. However, I, un I now understand that this was not the case. Turns out there might actually be a few things that a burn once thought were good that turned out to be much worse than he bothered to find out.